Hey guys, welcome to today's episode of Talking Decon. I'm Laura Spalding, CEO of Spalding Decon. And to my left here is Steve Miller, our Director of Marketing and Media. And then we have our other Steve here, Steve Wolf to my right, who is our Franchise Business Consultant. What do we got today? All right, so we've done a lot of big numbers before. Yes. You know, uh, Wolf over here did 250 <laughs> victims recently. Overachiever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're doing we're doing smaller numbers. There's yeah. only two murders. Okay. Right? But the case that we're going to discuss today is so troubling that the defendant's own defense attorney referred to this family as one of the most dysfunctional families in all of America. That's a lot. It's a lot because the Kardashians are I in was going to say, the Kardashians yeah. are in America yeah, so and they been, beat them out? They beat them out by a long distance. Holy shit. A long we're distance in trouble. Back. Probably yeah. not even fair to compare the two. Okay. Uh, so today on Talking Decon, we're talking about Eddie Lee Sexton and the Sexton family. Up front, I want to give a trigger warning for incest murder and including the murder of a child. So oh, it's man. it's heavy. It's, ha- it's a heavy one. The sources for this story are Murderpedia, ProDeathPenalty.com, and the Tampa Bay Times. By the way, shout out to ProDeathPenalty.com for maybe having the best URL on the entire yeah. internet. I like that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> Tampa Bay Times. So here locally is... Yeah, so the murders actually took place about 30, 45 minutes south of here in a state park called Little Manatee River oh, State Park. I know where that is. Yeah, but the story starts in Ohio, as every bad story oh, starts. Oh, yes. <laughs> Shout out to them Buckeyes. Yeah. All right. So we start with Eddie Sexton. Eddie was born in uh, 1942 in Logan, West Virginia. In 1963, he committed his first armed robbery, right? So he's 20, 21 years old. He robbed a gas station 24 hours after he got married to his 15-year-old pregnant girlfriend. So he's 20, 21. His first wife is 15 years old. I feel old. like that's normal in West Virginia. I feel like it is normal for West Virginia. Isn't that I, I, called the honeymoon? <laughs> <laughs> it's called a little too old. A little too old, um, yeah. Uh, his wife divorced him right after giving birth to the kid, which is good for her. And look, you know, I also feel like it was different back then as well. Like, you used to yeah. see a lot of that, like, you know, and I don't know. I, I couldn't even talk like, oh, so I'm 46. I think if he was around like a 20, 21 year old, I don't even know what to say. And I know that the age gap between 21 and 15 is different, but I couldn't imagine wanting to sit in a room with a 15 year old. Well, and they look at us like we're super old. We have 21 year olds that work here. Yes. Yeah. And they remind me all the time, Kennedy yes. and Mariah and social <laughs> media, just how old I am. Yeah. So, so my, my question was, did he use a shotgun for the robbery? Because that's a new meaning to shotgun. Shotgun wedding. Wedding, Exactly. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, if he got the gift, if he got the shotgun as a <laughs> gift, got, <laughs> finally, I got the tools from the train. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, after they got divorced, thankfully for her, uh, he later married a woman named Estella May. And together they had 12 children. Holy yeah. vagina stretching. They, and they lived in a shoe. Of course. Yes, okay. they are. This is a Grimm's fairy tale. Actually, it's a very <laughs> grim fairy tale. Wait, was she underage as well? I don't have her age. I apologize okay. for that. So 12 children. Yeah. 12 kids and not parents of the year. So Eddie only allowed each of his children to have one friend. Those friends were never allowed to visit them at home, and they were never allowed to visit the, ch- the the other person's home, right? So it's like, you can have friends, you can have one, they can't come here, and you can't go there. And now we're talking about, what, the 60s, right? 60s or 70s, so what sort of friendship yeah, is that anyway? Exactly. Nowadays, yeah. my stepson is fine staying at home and communicating with all of his friends. Yeah. You know, social media via or social media, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Your one friend is your brother. That's yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, my closest friends were my brothers for sure. Um, people described Eddie as polite and charming when you first met him, but eventually you saw the other side of him, and he was actually a fraudster and a serial con artist. In the 70s, so this is like, to me, this, this definitely plays in throughout the whole story where you hear this come up. Uh, in the 70s, he briefly worked, worked, it seems like a bit of a stretch, uh, as an independent Christian preacher. He had a highly unorthodox doctrine emphasizing sex and apocalyptic predictions that he later used to indoctrinate and intimidate his children. Cult. Yeah. Well, he already, he's, bu- he's building his own cult. He has 12 right. children. Gotcha. Right. Perfect. Right. You're already on it, brother. You're already on <laughs> yeah. it. Journalist Lowell Coffell wrote, Eddie Lee Sexton maintained his own place of worship, but nobody could figure out what gospel he was preaching. A little general occult, a little fundamentalism, a little Satanism, and a little sci-fi hustle. His neighbor, Augusta Houston, reported that Eddie claimed to worship both God and the devil. So that's where we're at 
That's the mental state they were at. Well, let me right? guess. He had to pay no taxes because it's a bona fide religion. Uh, I think that I doubt he probably even got that far. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if Scientology doesn't yeah, even pay taxes. Yeah, exactly. I just I love that idea where it's like, yes, I'm a Christian fundamentalist. I also worship the devil. Yeah. And let's put some sci-fi in there as well. It's like, bro, I'm going to yeah. go back to the Lutheran church. Exactly. <laughs> this is good for me. So continuing on with sort of fraudster type ways, Eddie received disability checks uh, because he had a bad back, in quotes. Uh, yet all during this time frame, he worked under the table as a handyman and a painter. So obviously, <laughs> well, I mean, bullshit. Our arm robbery is dangerous. He probably hurt his back. Yeah, it's not easy work. It's not. It's I highly mean, it, stressful. It's stressful. Highly and, competitive. I mean, <laughs> as a citizen, it's only natural that our tax dollars go to this criminal. I feel bad that it took him so long to get these checks. <laughs> I wish they would have given him more sooner. My my question is. If you are a convicted felon, you still qualify for government subsidies Amazing. on disability? Right? Amazing. Yeah. Holy you have shit. been nothing but a burden yes. for sure. us. So let us enable you to be a bigger burden to us. Right. Like from jump, <laughs> there should have been a lot. There's a plenty oh of red flags. So let's say you worship the devil, right. you're an armed felon, and you need disability. Okay, cool. So in addition to the disability fraud... He was also suspected to have committed insurance fraud when three of his houses burned down during the 80s. Wait, how do you afford three houses? Well, the one burns down, you get money, and then... Oh, you, like, so he repeatedly I, Over did. and over and over again, right? Like, not... He didn't own three houses. They just keep... Oh. He kept having to buy them, they kept burning down. He, he probably, since he was getting disability, also had a government assistant loan to purchase the first house. Probably not wrong. And then probably are not wrong. arson investigators that bad in Ohio? They it's, couldn't figure this yeah, out till the a, third one? It's unbelievable. So I tried to do some research on, like, what are the odds yes. of your house burning down? And it's difficult to pinpoint it because it's always different. <laughs> like, if it's a block house versus a wood house <laughs> right, versus right. a smoker or not. Right. But basically, sort of what it came down to, at least this is according to homex.com, the ads are roughly one in 3,000. You know, so this oh. means, and this guy in one decade... And look, by the way, by their own admission, this is like, you know, who you, we yeah. really can't come up right. with one. But the fact that three times in one decade, my houses keep burning down. Yeah. Like, do, lightning he, strikes. he has a better chance of, of getting hit by lightning or the lottery, Absolutely. Yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. Uh, Did anyone die in these fires? No, nobody okay. died. Nobody died. Like, at this point, he's just straight grifter. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to start my own church. Shit, that didn't work out. We all know why, because yeah. you can't tell people you're going to be a Christian church and then tell them to talk about sci-fi and the devil. Right. Uh, and then, you know, he's got the handyman scam with the bad back. So the children of Eddie and Estella stated that their parents committed some of the extreme acts of abuse on them nearly every day. The children stated that every one of them was sexually abused by both of their parents. Their parents would also beat them and lock them in their bedrooms for any sort of minor infraction. So she's a sick f too. She's a sick f as well. They found each other. They're meant for each other. And yeah. they bred their victims. Yes. That is. Yeah. That don't go find them. Breed them. Yeah. So that you oh, have them in house. Keep them and all in house. You're talking about that call. Yeah. And right? no, but and you boys can't and tell, girls. Boys and girls. And that's the that's kind of the scary side of the line where you. I, as a parent, say, don't tell me how to raise my kid. But at the same time, there Certain sometimes there people, needs to be some intervention because... Absolutely. Because this sort of thing happens. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And you're talking about breeding your own victims. So as a result of both parents abusing the children, many of the children started abusing the of other course. children. Of course. Yeah. You know? So it's just this self-replicating... Right. cycle. This, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, the father, Eddie, even went as far as the staging fake weddings... Uh, consisted of him getting married to his daughters before he would rape them, right? So now we're seeing that sort of religious preacher type thing coming together and having these ceremonies. Yeah, like well, and these girls probably didn't know any different. Mm -hmm. They're children. Sure, of course. Yeah, Eddie made his children believe that he had some supernatural powers and that he could summon spirits and even ghosts. You know, uh, he said his children said Eddie would hold seance-like ceremonies, which involved a dead cat, and the children would have to sign a contract using their own blood stating that if they disobeyed him, that they would be banished to hell. You know, so now you have this real heavy sexual and physical abuse, and then you have this mental abuse, and you're tying religion into all oh of this. Oh, my God. And, you know, I'm sure... This reminds me of this Jeffries thing from the cult, from the uh, Utah thing. Yeah, Jeffries. Yeah. Warren it's Je yeah, sounding yeah, yeah. Warren Jeffries. Absolutely. It's sounding yeah, a lot yeah, like absolutely. that. And it's scary how they use religion to yes. program yeah. people. Yes. And, you know, that that's one of those things that anybody that is that is against religion say that religion is programming people. Sure. They're telling you that if you don't do this, that this deity is going to punish you and they feel that it's just programming. That's why mm -hmm. most people are resistant to that. Of course. Yeah. And it's like these sort of extreme stories give fuel to that. Well, like, you know, yeah. I myself am not religious, 
but my parents both were and uh and i saw the good that it did for them like mm-hmm. you know but but at the same time it's like it's so easily to manipulate that and then you wind up in this weird situation where these children are still existing in the world they know that christianity is out there they know that god's out there so these are not like society almost reinforces it a little bit i'm not saying that society enforces this sort of stuff but you go out in the world it's like yeah you see the churches everywhere it's like well that's what dad, dad talks about like it must sort of still be in mm-hmm. um, this isn't that crazy this is right. how the world goes you know eventually uh eddie wound up impregnating his daughter estella who was also known as pixie so from here on out when we talk about her we're going to talk about her as pixie when they realized that pixie was pregnant eddie encouraged her to go out and find a boyfriend to sort of take the Pin blame it on off him. of him. How right? old was this girl? So she's high school age okay. around this time. Okay. Oldest daughter? Uh, no, she's not the oldest daughter. And I apologize, okay. I don't have all the dates okay. right in front of me. But you'll see why you see why the, some of the children are starting to leave the house at this point. Okay. Um, Pixie met Joel Good, who she went to high school with. And uh, he was described as being slow-witted and overly trusting. You know, So the two of them got married over the objections of his parents. His parents were like, what are you doing? Yeah. And the, one of the big objections was she already had two kids. <gasps> so like he's marrying her because I got to do the right thing. Like, oh my gosh, I've gotten her pregnant. Wait, she already like, had two kids by her father? Where did the kids go? They're being raised in the home. Those two kids, unbeknownst to Joel, Joel finds out later oh. that they're the dads. But at the time, he didn't know. But they were, they, so this was the, the third time. That Where's DCF pregnant? when you need them? Yeah. Exactly. So is the dad and the mom raising pixie's kids yeah. as their own and uh, no letting... i'm sure pixie's raising them as their own i'm sure they're the grandparents you know gotcha. but, but publicly well, i'm sure dad, it's the dad, publicly i'm sure the father it's too though yeah yeah so the kids are coming out kind of eh, yeah exactly chromosomes not you know yeah not great uh so after pixie and joel are married she gave birth to skipper you know the kid so the sexton household surprisingly to nobody was under a great deal of investigations like we're asking uh-huh. where's dcf at what's yeah. going on with this they knew something was going on, and they had a file going back on them starting in 1979, all right? And this file apparently was very thin. There wasn't much in it, you know? But they were on the radar, right. you know? Then finally in 1992. Yeah. So they come on the radar in 79. And then in 92, oh one of his daughters, Michelle, told employees at a woman's shelter that the father was raping her. Okay. So that kicks everything off. When she made her claims, there were still six children living with the Sextons, right? So an investigation starts off. They start interviewing the kids. Three of the children said, we're being abused. Three of the children said, we're not being abused. To complicate things further, by the way, Michelle later recanted. Oh, shit. Oh, it didn't happen. Uh, So what happened was the three children that said we're being abused, they pulled them immediately, put them into foster care. Right. The other three stayed with them to begin an investigation. So one of the three children that was pulled out and put into foster care, a woman named Lana, was with her foster parents for seven months until she finally said that her parents, or excuse me, probably, probably told her foster parents that her mother, Estrella, was sexually abusing her. So for her, for this little girl, it was the mom. It wasn't even the dad. So her claim was later confirmed after medical reports. So you said seven months. Was it that's where she felt comfortable was she not speaking is it something that no she finally got comfortable enough like she finally got enough distance she finally felt safe she uh, she was speaking it wasn't like she wasn't speaking at all because she did say she had been abused which is how she got pulled out of the house okay but i think it took her seven months to finally get her bearings and to realize that i'm in a safe place here yeah because i'm sure i mean imagine how long it would take for you to feel safe like i'm not gonna have to go back there yeah no you know i mean and you have to think about your first relationship and your first confirmation of love is supposed to come from your parents. Parents. Yeah. And you, in all situations, you are most trusting of your parents Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and for them to break that trust through abuse and sexual and sexual harm towards you. Now there's nothing that can make me trust anybody at any point. No way. Yeah. So people are supposed to love me the most. People are supposed to care for me the most do this to me, the world out there must be forget about oh, it. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know? and because as you said, the, the the societal influence also tells you your parent, no matter what, your parents are your protectors. They, they're they sure. going to do best by you. Yeah. And don't forget, I've signed a pact in my own blood saying that if I disobeyed my parents, I was going to hell. Yep. You know, and at some level, you believe this, you know, it, it must take years of therapy to unfuck your brain mm-hmm. from that. 
you know. So after this claim and the subsequent proof came out, the county finally decided, okay, it's time to we're going to take the rest of these kids. You know, immediately Eddie and Estelle, Estelle excuse me, start filing a ton of legal briefs. Like they're doing everything they can to hang on to their kids, including claiming that they're a Native American <laughs> and attempting to shift their case to a tribal court. You know, so they're oh doing everything God. that they could possibly do. And I'm sure whatever tribe they claim to be part of were like, uh, <laughs> no, thank you, guys. Uh -huh. You yeah. absolutely are not one of us. Yeah. You know, no way. So none of these tactics works. The tide starts to turn against them. They realize we're going to lose these kids. So they pack everybody up in a van and they hit the road. Everybody by being three, there's three kids. There's three children. Right. Then there's Pixie and Joel. Oh, they're coming with them. They're coming with them. And Pixie's three children all get into a van together there's 11 people there's 11 people total and they hit hit the road they go on the lamb you know oh my god 11 like, people in a van in a smart car yeah I'm yeah thinking, yeah I'm thinking like a dodge <laughs> caravan yeah. with blacked out windows that have cardboard sure. over they're probably on this road trip they're sleeping in the van piled up absolutely with a buckeye sticker on the back window <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> It, like there's there's plenty to there's plenty that's disgusting in this story, uh -huh. but there's always these little things that stand out to me. Where I'm like, eleven people in a van, I'm like, oh. one more person, they'd really be the Big Twelve. Pixie's yeah, husband yeah. is the one I feel most sorry for to have to be with your in laws for in tight quarters like that. Yeah, and all those people. Uh, yeah. yeah, and by you know by several different accounts that I read, like he was a slower guy, you know, and so then it's like he thinks he's doing the right thing, so he comes, you know, he's like, oh, I. I knock this woman up which is a very romantic way of me saying yeah but i've impregnated this woman right. i'm gonna marry her i'm gonna right. do this and then it's like oh no i should have listened to my parents like now i'm in a van yeah. with, a, with 10 other people right. traveling to oklahoma oh that's where they're headed that's where they're heading to oklahoma okay. to stay with eddie's relatives for a few months finally uh they stay there for a bit and then they head down to florida as all oh, good criminals they do you either go up to alaska or down to florida um and they wind up at the manatee little like mentioned the little manatee river state park it's in Waimama, which, like I said, is like 30, 45 minutes south of where we are. So during this time, the crazy gets ramped up, which is really saying something uh, because of where we're already at. Eddie begins, ha begins having the entire family participate in paramilitary training to prepare the kids and the family for, look, the cops are coming because he's not a dummy. Mm -hmm. okay. you know, the cops are definitely going to show up. We got to be ready for them. Yeah. And so now I'm starting to see the militia. Yep. The Warren exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Uh -huh. So we talked, we mentioned at the top, like his, that religion that he made up yep. had a, a, um, apocalyptic right. prophecies in it. Right. And this is always a big part of apocalyptic right. cults, right? Where right. it's like, it's us against them. They're right. coming for us. Like we got to get ready. Let's learn how to live in the woods. Yeah. 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 Uh, during this time, the sex and children began drinking heavily and inhaling gasoline fumes. So he, I mean, the contradiction here is stark, right? We got to be prepared for anything. Yeah. Also, let's go have some yeah. gas. And I don't blame these kids, by the way. Anything to get out of oh, your yeah. own mind. Oh, yeah. Anything to self-medicate and get away. Absolutely. You know, so during this time, we talked about these disability checks, right? So we're in like 1993 now. During this time, Eddie is driving back to Ohio every two weeks to cash his disability checks. If you remember... I mentioned that he started getting disability checks in the 70s. Can you not cash them in Florida? Well, I'm sure his address is still in Ohio because they're probably being drawn against something in Ohio. So he's Was this before direct deposit days? I would imagine. But but he's also on the lam. He doesn't he, want anybody was, to have his new address. That's what I was saying. I don't want oh, you to so know where I'm at. So out for him. Yeah. Yeah. And so, if I go back by myself... I'm the only one that goes to jail. Nobody else goes to jail. My That's wife. That's a hell of a drive for about 400 bucks. Every two weeks, or right? Bucks, whatever. So the Ohio courts had issued arrest warrants, but the cases were a relatively low priority and was not initially well publicized due to family court rules at the time. Family court rules at the time right. wanted to keep the anonymity of child abuse victims. Right. So it's lower priority. Nobody really knew. So it comes with these situations where, yes, technically he's wanted, you know, but nobody's actively pursuing him. So, on the night of October 20th, 1993, Skipper, the son of Joel and Pixie, is, is being fussy. He's being loud. Um, he apparently had been sick, and Eddie forbade him going to the hospital. He can't take him to the hospital for obvious reasons, you know. Um, Eddie was nervous that if the kid kept crying throughout the night and kept making noise, people are going to get upset and they're going to start... People, he doesn't want anybody saying shit. So they're like camping out in a tent? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, they're in their van. Oh, they're parked in their van. At, you know, okay. I would hope that at least there's a tent, whatever. Yeah. This is just my own claustrophobia. Van down speaking. by the river. Yeah, right. Okay. Exactly. Uh, ding, 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 ding. 
Sexton, Eddie, uh-huh. told Pixie to keep Skipper quiet. She put her hand over the baby's mouth mm-hmm. until he stopped breathing. Shocking. I knew this was going that way. Willie Sexton, who is uh, one of the sons, Pixie's brother, okay. would later say he watched from his upper bunk in the motorhome as his sister killed her baby. So we're calling it a motorhome here. It says in a van elsewhere. There's 11 people. They're sleeping in it. It's got to be some sort of hybrid yeah. situation. Again, that's not what the takeaway uh-huh. really should be. It should be the fact that he watched. He watches this happen. He so sees, Pixie he, did it? Pixie, Pixie killed her it. own kid. Pixie killed her own kid. Okay. Eddie, the father, was le- the, the father of both Pixie and Skipper, was leaning on her to keep the kid quiet, whatever, you know. Van motorhome, Ford Ecoline with the attachment, the camper attachment on top. There That's we go. what I'm thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> I love that this conversation is taking place on two planes. Talking about, <laughs> talking about the van and the, and the dead now, child. Now, do these kids look inbred? No, because there's not that, like... Nothing that's mentioned to that effect. Okay. Nothing that I read to that effect. And I don't know. I'm not a genealogist. That's probably not even the right word. Geneticist. Uh, I don't know if in the first stage of incest if those things start showing up. Maybe they do. Maybe it's more mental. Well, when you take a 15-year-old to the hospital to give birth, the police are called. One would assume. She's 15. Yeah. One would assume. And she's had two kids Uh prior. Um, Pixie carried the corpse with her for several days. Jesus. Believing that her father had the power to resurrect the child. Obviously, this did not happen. So when they finally buried Skipper, he was wrapped in a blanket, put inside a gym bag and garbage bags, and they were then piled with brick pieces and buried near the campsite. Yeah. So after Skipper's murder, Joel, the father, wanted to go back to Ohio with Pixie. He said, oh, this is crazy. We got to get out of here. This is wild. And you bring your two daughters mm-hmm. with you. We're getting out of here. Pixie at this point informed Joel that Eddie Sexton, her father, was the, actually the father of her other two daughters. And Sexton would not allow them to return to Ohio. He threatened to turn Pixie in for killing her son if they left. Right? So it becomes a situation yep. where it's like, Bribery. babe, this is crazy. Yeah. We got to get out of yeah. here. Like, we have gone too far. Right. And he's like, well, you know, I got to tell you something else. Like, these other two kids are also my father's and he's not going to let me go. And then the father starts in with, if you guys leave, I'm going to say that she killed her kid, mm-hmm. which she did. Mm-hmm. Then you guys are done. So it becomes you're frozen. Right. You're held captive. Right. Um, so Eddie Sexton decided that he's going to have Willie Sexton, his son, kill Joel. Because they were worried that Joel would tell the police about the infant's death. Right. right. No witnesses. Right. Um, and then he would tell about the sexual abuse and the location of the family. And they would get busted. Right. So Willie, the, the, the one that he taps to do this, the one that saw Pixie kill the baby, it was 22 years old and was determined to function at the level of an eight-year-old. So, oh, my God. So he's not a victim of incest. It, it's, it's the two parents. It's his, their kid. Oh, but okay. Because of how poorly they were raised, yeah. because of everything going on, yeah. this is a 22-year-old yeah. man with the functioning ability of an eight-year-old. Jesus. If that gives you any sort of indication of just how right. everything was in this home, you know. So on November 17th, 1993, some members of the fa- family sex, se- <laughs> some members of the sex of family, including Eddie, went on a picnic. Other members of the family stayed at the campsite. Uh, and then later what happened was Pixie testified that William and Joel left the campsite and went into the woods. Pixie and her sister, Sherry Sexton, went to look for them when they heard Joel shout. According to Pixie, they found William strangling Joel with a rope. Pixie went around went and found her father, Eddie, bringing them to where William and Joel were in the woods. Sexton saw that Joel was still moving. William hadn't quite killed him yet, and he told him to finish the job. In front of Pixie. Yeah. Okay. You know, so there's no confusion as to what's happening here. Around this time, the FBI finally issue a national arrest warrant uh, for both Estella and Eddie Sexton for unlawful flight to avoid prosecution. So finally, you know, the, the gears are finally going in motion. They release this national it's a national one. During this time frame, Eddie makes a call to his brother-in-law in Indiana and charged the call to his previous number in Ohio, right? Which is something that I don't even know. I didn't even know you could do that. But uh, the FBI determined that that call was placed from a payphone in Little Manatee River State Park. So they start putting the pieces together. The FBI also determined that the Sexton family was uh, probably driving a gray 1993 Nissan Sentra that Eddie Sexton had brought from his brother-in-law but had made no payments. So I'm assuming now they have a car and a van. Yeah. Therefore, Sexton's brother-in-law reported the automobile is stolen, right? So it's like, hey, I'll buy the car for me. Then he never makes mm-hmm. payment, take off. You know, so he reports it's stolen. The FBI in Ohio contacts the FBI in Tampa 
and gave them the information about the location of the family and then their automobile. So the FBI locates the family at Little Manatee River State Park. They maintained surveillance on the family and finally arrested Eddie and Estella when they left the campsite in the automobile. So they sat there, watched them for a bit, spotted them. When they came out, they got him. Now, Eddie was found guilty in under three hours of deliberation. And he was given the death sentence on November 2nd, 1994. Right? Which is about how I think that the... Now, that was for the murders or for the rapes? So that's just for the murders. That's that, my, that's, oh, that's so my understanding for the murders. for the rapes? Yeah. So I, I got a question about yeah, the car. Ahead. The Nissan Sentra that he bought from the brother. Right. Do you think that was fraud too? I'm going to report it stolen. And now that we're going to court, I'm going to say, oh, he never paid me for it. That's why I reported it stolen. Oh, maybe. Like I, he's trying to, cover, I mean, he's trying to cover his own tracks, like it being associated with him, you mean? Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to report be. stolen. Let me get get my insurance to pay me for the car. I mean, you know. He's they, a family of grifters. I, I felt like he was, he was helping his brother in some sort. And then once things started to come down, let me figure out a way. I'm going to report it stolen. I had oh, nothing right. to do with that type of thing. Oh, yeah. So, like, the brother shows up and is like, hey, I need a car for a little bit. He's like, I got you, man. Yep. Like, and then you start putting the piece together like, oh, no. Yeah, I'm going to be tied like, to this. Let me report it stolen. Yeah. Type I guess it's possible. So, what what actually was he tried for then? He was tried for the murder. Just the murder. Yeah. Let me, while we're, while we're talking here, I'll look it up and make okay. sure I'll double check it. Uh, Pixie was given six years for the killing of her son. Pixie's brother, Willie... Uh, pled guilty to second degree murder and he received 25 years. While Estella May received a two year prison sentence for her part in abusing Lana. So if you remember that young girl that after seven yeah. months, like she got two year prison sentence for her part in that. Two but, years. But for then she had a second assaulted. trial. Yeah, which is crazy, right? Yeah. But then she had a second trial in which she was charged with over a dozen abuse charges and she was given life in prison. Okay. So I'm thinking that uh, that. Um, Eddie had to have been yeah. it had to have been all these charges that have been the rapes okay. and the sexual assaults because you know she faced the same yeah. so thankfully she got life in prison as well in 1997 Eddie appealed his case his appeal was to overturn his conviction and grant him a new trial his excuse me his appeal was able to overturn it oh. and give him a new trial however even with his new trial he was still without a doubt found guilty <laughs> and given the penalty of death over again <laughs> which is just like go f*** yourself yeah, yeah. okay yeah. Good. You beat uh, her on a technicality. Great. Let's run it up yeah. one more time. Because <laughs> I, I would love to give you the death penalty a second time. Because yeah. oh I would God. love to kill you twice. What a waste of resources. Exactly. Yeah. Jesus. You know, uh, Eddie wound up dying from natural causes in a uh, in correctional institution. And Estella May, uh, the mother, yeah. the wife, died in October 2017 from natural causes at the age of 17. 70, not 17. What about Pixie? So, so she did her prison sentence. I tried to find where she was. I tried to see if there were any updates on her. I was not able to find any updates on where she is. I, I would imagine that she, her time's been served. Like this, you know, this was happening in the early early to mid-90s. Yeah. She was charged with six years. She must have been out for a while now, you know. Wow. And uh, and at least, you know, a cursory Google search didn't show up anything. What about new, uh, so. when they were actually on trial, the kids that had moved out of the house that had already grown out? Did they testify? At they all? had to have been because, like, here we have, you know, Estella May, the, the mother, was charged with over a dozen abuse charges. Right. You know, so there's, I, I can't imagine they were able to put a case together without bringing the kids in. Yeah. You know, they, yeah. they had to have been involved. You know, and the kids had already started. Like, we know at least three of them said, I've been abused. Right. You know, and I'm sure over time, like, it, more and more, I'm sure I would imagine yeah. would come out and said the same. I think the, the thing that would be hard there is being the three that left constantly thinking about the three that stayed. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. what is my obligation to my, mm-hmm. my siblings, siblings mm-hmm. to get them free of the same punishment right. that I know. And I've witnessed myself them doing, right. But they are so scared to speak up against the mother and the father, sure. you know, that survivor's so, guilt has to be enormous. Absolutely. Like, Cause we can logically say, these were three other kids. It's not on them to save them, but it doesn't make it easier as you move through the world. You know, Mm -hmm. Um, by the way, this was submitted as an idea from a viewer, which was like, you know, so we go through and we try to spot if there's any interesting cases. And I, I had never heard of this case, even though it happened. I I was in Tampa at the time. I was, it was 19, 1920 around that time. So I was, but I don't recall this at all. I don't either, but he has the name of a rock star. Eddie Sexton. Uh, it, it really does. Doesn't he? Yeah. He sounds like a rock Eddie star. Sexton and the Hot Rods. Yeah, exactly. 
But, at a, yeah, wow. it being here hometown, I've actually been to Little Manatee River a couple of different times. Yeah. I'm going to ask for a discount next time now that I know the story. <laughs> I know like, what happens here. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah it's, this is one of those, like, just, I don't know how this isn't a movie. I don't know how this isn't a documentary. Maybe it is. Maybe I'm just missing it. But this is, like, the such a horror situation right. for those kids where it's, like, it's sexual abuse. It's physical abuse. It's, you know, it's you're signing contracts and blood. There's ceremonies with dead cats. You know, it's Satanism. It's huffing gas. It's, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's. it's Jesus. That's horrible. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's a good one. Yeah. Definitely. So I'm glad they're passed on. Yeah. Those. Yeah. I just wonder, you know, like the thing that remains in my head is what happened to the surviving children? Oh, I'd love Were to know. Were they ever able to lead a normal life or probably not? Or are any of them much- now. Sex offenders. Sex offenders. Are yeah. they doing this? Are we seeing a bit it, the yeah. it passing down through the generations? Cycle, sure. Yeah, the cycle. I would. I, I hope. You know. I think the same thing that everybody hopes that they got as much help as they needed, and they got some guidance and that they're able to find some sort of a normal life through yeah. this. You know, because yeah. I just. You know, I mean, everything you just laid out. You know, we talk about. I could have got my because there's the first three. There's the first six kids too, right? Right. That left anyway. Exactly. And only one woman, only one of the kids reported it, you know, and that's no shade to the other five, but it's like they have to live through that. So they lived their whole childhood this way yeah. and then graduate and watch it keep happening. Like I can't, can't imagine the, the psychological minefield yeah. that they have to go through every day. Okay. You know, it makes me feel, you know, like complaining a lot less. Yeah. I just, I hope there's a, enough government resources for people like that because yeah. they deserve it. They know, deserve every just, bit of it. Yeah, every bit of it. So thank you. That was a good one. Definitely. All right, guys. Thanks for watching today's episode of Talking Decon. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell for future notifications. And follow us on TikTok and Instagram at at Crime Scene Cleaning. Have a great day.